What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Uh, today, I'm going to be getting into the Ricky Gervais show again. Now, I will not lie to you guys, and at the risk of losing possible viewers for this video, I will say that I have seen this. This is one of the videos that is the catalyst for me taking this little hiatus that I took because... I recorded this as well as a few other videos and for some reason there was issues with my recording. I don't know what the hell happened. It's like some settings on my uh, programs automatically changed without me knowing and it wasn't until I got done with all the editing that all this stuff happened and I got so upset that I was like, you know what, I'm going to have to take a break. I can't, <laughs> I, I can't just get right back into it. This is, I, I just got to take a minute. But uh, after taking my quick knee, I went ahead and, you know, started recording again. So let's try to do this again. This is Ricky Gervais Season 2, Episode 3, The Fly. Um, honestly, I forgot exactly what it was about. Uh, one of the reasons why I took the hiatus is because if I take a long enough break, then hopefully by the time I get back into this, I will have forgotten most of what I had seen. So I don't really know what to expect. I, I tend to have... Uh, very bad memory sometimes so let's go ahead and see what this has to offer um, I'm sure there are going to be some things once it kicks off I'm going to start to remember uh, certain lines and uh, talking points and things like that but let's go ahead and check this out oh yeah before I get into this this video was uploaded by Tian Shu Li um, you can go ahead and check out their uploads uh, I will leave a link for the original video in the description box down below as well as a link to their channel up here somewhere and um, if you want to go ahead and check out the official release, YouTube does have the Ricky Gervais show on YouTube. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, I believe you can buy the season or at least rent the season for about, I forgot how much it was, but you can rent the entire season and check it out in high definition and you know all the good stuff. But let's go ahead and check this out. HBO Entertainment presents. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. This Testing. Is, one of them. is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome yeah, look, to the Ricky Gervais uh, Show pause. with Some me, Ricky Gervais. I just clicked pause. Why did it take that long to pause? Uh, my, my controls have a bit of a delay right now. Hopefully this isn't a, a harbinger of things to come. But, uh, yeah, I, I mentioned something in the last video about the height difference between these guys. And somebody said they didn't really notice it. In the cartoon segment, you don't notice. In the real segment, you definitely see a height uh, disparity between Steve and everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I, they don't really translate it that well on the cartoons. But I just wanted to point that out real quick. A show Somebody made a device. comment. I wanted to Steven show you guys. Steve Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl. It always I've gets me how much Ricky looks you. like uh, Fred Flintstone, clean shaved. Inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? So what, what? How have they found that out? The air just well, kicked on. There might be some yeah. hissing in the mic, maybe. But I've I've never heard of any fish having cancer. Though I haven't heard of a, a cod being ill. <laughs> so why are we focusing on that one? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay. Stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. <gasps> What, because it's it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out, or is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? Okay, I will get into this because I did. I remember making a comment on this last time I recorded it. I think the reason why some spiders tend to get bald, like mainly like tarantulas and stuff, is because one of their defense mechanisms is to kick up hair at uh, predators and things like that. So the hair comes off very easily. And I'm sure if you Google search it, if you are brave enough to Google search tarantulas, <laughs> um you will see a bunch of tarantulas with like bald butts and bald spots on them because when they rub that spot to try to kick up hair which is extremely irritating for humans um, 
it leaves like a really shiny bald spot there. So I would imagine rubbing a spider would cause that effect also. He doesn't like it and he gets stressed out or is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think Did anybody stroke with... Carl too hard? I mean, what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? Yes, that's a quote now. <laughs> really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. No. It was uh, just a little bee. She'd been out, um, sunny day and that. Uh, got the washing off the washing line. Mm. She was bringing it in. Little bee sat on the top of like the bed sheet or whatever it was. I want to see a picture of Miss Pilkington and, um, and see if she looks like she's Carl. In the kitchen with it. And she goes, look at that. Little bee there. She started sort of stroking its stroking its head. And it loved it. <laughs> <laughs> How did it make it clear that it loved it? Well, it wasn't. He wasn't struggling. It was just sat there like. Because it must have been like a bit dozy. They get a bit dozy, don't they, in the uh, in the heat and that. Mm. And uh, it just stayed there on the sheet, and she sort of strokes its head for a bit. And she had to put it out. It didn't go out. It didn't try and escape. It was like you've had enough now. <laughs> uh, that was that was that. She sent it out. It's always funny how Carl just goes from nice to just like, okay, now get the hell out of here. We had Harry the house fly. What? Said, Harry the house fly. What do you mean? It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right, it's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. Yeah. How do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, oh, look, it's back. Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl, what makes you think it was a pet house fly as opposed to a different fly every day? Because it was always in the same place in the corner. But it could have been that something about that particular place that attracted flies rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not. It wasn't harming us. It's just. It just always hung about. But how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, does, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like we're thinking another fly is <laughs> getting a bit of free rent or something, just, no, just let it let it stay. I don't understand what. But why, why no? Well, no. I d right. Okay. You're in a house, right? There's flies. Okay. Not flies. Fly. What? Why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies, at no point was there a crossover period where there's two, and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. Trying to get one over on me. Just thought, like, leave it, it's all right. I don't know why. Why are you suspicious? Why do you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, I, don't, fly. No, I don't know why you assumed when you see a fly every now and again that it's exactly the same fly. It just was. It's Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? <laughs> oh, all right. I don't, but I, at no point did I feel suspicious. Uh, at least, he, at least he admitted that. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky. Check out the video of uh, Carl Pilkington in a story the there house with a thousand fly dead flies. That its eyesight was bad or something, and they've made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing. Okay, this is this is incredible, Steve. Can I can I take over? Hang here? on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got. There's a small fly and they've made it a pair of glasses yeah. so that it can see better. Yeah. Wow. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of we're, we're looking after everything now, aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly, fly with a pair of glasses, glasses on. Right? Yeah. right? It was about a one-sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had... As an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses someone to put on a house. They put it on there and they're taking a picture of it, and it's on uh, sorry, display. At no point was it actually because the fly had bad eyesight. The fly was presumably <laughs> dead. It was purely an art installation or a show of technology. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you drawn the uh, glasses on there. <laughs> 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 you know, like, There's a bearded lady in this. <laughs> no. My God, my God, but they well, did it as an experiment. Uh, yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. Ricky is not letting and Carl get any of his bullshit through. Out all the time, don't we? When no. you, you know, we are, we're always doing it. We're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going... You've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> like the kid that needed a kidney, huh, Carl? Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. 
<laughs> uh, well, I'll do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll, 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 I'll stick him in neck out here. Um, but yeah. uh, right. I think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> 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 We've had a few emails about the old shows. People came into them late in the season. Did Daniel. I not tell you this? We we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, it was an email from a guy who said, uh, I think. Well, I don't think he lives. He lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologise for if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told, he said he was half Inuit, and he listens to the show. Half Inuit. Mm. See, that's interesting because I think I mean, it was so remote. I know I'm probably <laughs> wrong now, but I think that those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't. <laughs> that are into also it. Into it, yeah. Oh, and it was going, <laughs> you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet someone there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> skin stuff. Skin stuff. Yeah. Boil <laughs> stuff to skin. <laughs> oh, you know, seals. Seals. Yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why aren't seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because yeah. they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say, mm. like, if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal, that's sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a <laughs> and a dog, <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. Yeah, that's not what how do you evolution think works. Evolution does. Do you, I just, fish I, to I'll dog. Never understand it. Maybe I think, think seals are more related to like bears, aren't they? I'm just saying it's it sort of could a perfectly be wrong. evolved mammal that re-entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined. And it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. <laughs> But why not have one and the other? Why not have, like, you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between... It doesn't have a fish and dog parent. Well, I don't so. know what, this I, is it, again, about okay. saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal. Like, What's he doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just have fun What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's between <laughs> Why does Carl have such like a pessimistic viewpoint on everything? Of people like, in the world to have a chat with. Do you know um, what's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that that displays the human body. Guns. Someone. Guns. Right. Traven. Or something. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, well, I don't. Is he? Is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that it's always. I mean, I could cut a body up. I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, is anyone mm -hmm. keeping an eye on him, sort of going, well, who is he, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's a proper doctor. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything. Like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't, I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly, <laughs> exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was, like, miles long. Yeah. Your body absorbs more nutri nutrients no, from the pointless. food the longer it goes. Just have, a, just have a straight, do you know what no, I mean? Straight. What are you talking about? Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us. It really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. What I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur, and that might have took a lot of indigestion or okay. something. I don't that know doesn't know need to be fact checked. That's 100. Dinosaur meat. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back up for a second. That doesn't need to be fact checked. That is 100 percent true. Cavemen ate dinosaurs. That's why our stomachs developed the way they did, so we can get some nutrients from the very tough meat. Indigestion or something. I don't know how chewy it was. It might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat, and it needs to go through all that. Now, we're eating like yogurt. So, I mean, <laughs> we, don't, we don't need anything that, you know, is, is, is doing that much work anymore. All the food is mm. mashed up. And in aura, right? <laughs> all her food is mashed. <laughs> Right, she doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how... how <laughs> she's got teeth, but she don't need them! No, but that's what how we need them. That's the, n removed, then. Well, no, that's the next step well, in evolution. Problem, wouldn't it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet. Um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other. So they were like, what can we do? Right? 
and one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were bored so until what, they did that for what, a laugh. What, to be fair, Carl could be telling the truth. He happens to be a very big fan of um, that uh, freak. Uh, I, I say that in a way that you guys know, like the Ripley's Believe It or Not type stuff. He's a big fan of that type of stuff, so I'm, I can only imagine he could be telling the truth. It's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. Um, what, for a laugh, they were bored so what, they did that for no, a laugh. What, what, like... what doctor's doing this then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say this is what we want, and no, 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 no. Doctors don't go. Well, if he wants another arm, and I'll take them. They don't. Doctors don't do that. Mm. What sort of practice is this doctor going around? And go, Doctor Jekyll. I mean, Carl, <laughs> think of what you're saying. No, but we've... where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. no, sign you're this. Paid. If you sign this, you can give my consent. <laughs> but, but we, you know, it isn't. What, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and and twins sort of it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like. So it, what would this solve though? I thought you said he, he he gave one of them a a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, to make them look different, right? Not. I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on. What are you thinking? Well, me three, you one. Therefore, not twins. <laughs> not <Nothing. laughs> I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of... There's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. <laughs> like, don't do things like right, this. Is it Saw 2? I don't know the sort of full <laughs> ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprised me. But what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle. Right. Mm -hmm. Peace. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there. Right. <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, <laughs> you know, you've got a lot of Damn fingers. It, girl. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers sewn that on to where his, his tackle is <laughs> he's happy well that's different though isn't it well, that's where really they've taken different. tissue <laughs> no, but they've that's I assume they, they fashioned it uh, into more of a knob than a finger <laughs> this ain't pleasing that, anybody <laughs> I mean, why at least not by itself well I'll tell you why because your finger has your, being able to your tissue move your individually type, like this would graft uh, t t near your testicles a sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal okay that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body but, that's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in surgery, surgery. <laughs> I know yeah use well I mean why not use a sausage you're a mental case <laughs> I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke, he had um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not going to be that good, but just carry on, um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. Like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that anyway. He was, he was fed up because he loved his meat, and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day. And thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. All he wants is some meat, for God's sake. Give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant. Cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, it's some, I know, it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. Mm. What are you talking about? It was just some some. He said the cancer jumped cancer out thing. of his mouth. It, sort of, <laughs> it was it was coming out waiting for the meat. It was. It was <laughs> so now he's like from the Green so Mile. Again, it, again, a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from is from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell. It was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. So it was a, it was, like it was a, alien. It was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't are you talking about? Meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. So it's actually sitting there. And it's like, why? <laughs> and if I'd have had some cancer in my throat, I go, <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? 
Uh, <laughs> they choked to death on this thing, and the wife was like, "Oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all." Just That's listen, to your, story. listen to your doctor. It's, it's all there's loads of weird stuff like that. <laughs> like, in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers, and they're, they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. <laughs> That's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right, one <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. Maybe the person who told <laughs> the him the Congo name had an accent. The Congo. <laughs> <laughs> Conga. Fucking hell, you're such a... Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two popper doms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said one more than one. He understood. When we picked up the food and took it home, there were five popper doms in the bag. <laughs> I don't know what a pompadour is, or... Wow, pompadour. Whatever he just said, I don't know what that is. There is a restaurant somewhere that's that like a tortilla. to eat. No, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. This is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. That's a hell of a phone yeah, call again. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. What, what do you think about that? What do you think about an island? A spider with the toupee. <laughs> full of spiders. Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders like wouldn't wouldn't be good but but they sort of do they do something there's something about if you did get rid of them all it would have an effect well, i think they keep Any, the pest control or pest in control mm, not not everything no <laughs> like i've said you know jellyfish and what have you who well, knows it's it's 97 percent water or something yeah so how much are they doing just give, give them another three percent make them water Give <laughs> 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 another three percent. <laughs> oh God! Went into the gadget mm. shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the? Who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little. Electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> what do you mean living underground? Okay. Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him and he said it's all it had been raining really heavily and that. And it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here? What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, he just said, oh, come, come round to us. And he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He's he happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't shock me. Damn. That's to, that's the shots fired at Third Carl. Day, you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I, I'd be surprised if I walked around uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. His dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said, let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So a, a man living in a hole is not, not that bizarre. <laughs> right, carry on. Watch the film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Ask Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? 
It's subtitled. I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah, she's he, a lucky, lucky woman. It must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is 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 up there already. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it because mm. you you know you, you read things, but you know it's possible. If you had a a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want. What's the point of that? Yeah. Do, do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitled film. Go, right, everybody. Let's all do the Congo. <laughs> the, the bathroom man was around at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could mm. use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> 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 Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again, there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are bees... They love a drink, um, and uh, they can, they can just, they, they will uh, drink pure alcohol. They love getting off it, and they fall down, and they're drunk, right? But some bees get uh, addicted in the, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction. Like ten percent of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed, and they've got guard bees, and they go, "Come on, we've all had a drink." Bounces. Yeah. They sort of are, right? And they push them away, and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good hiding. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face, but I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit <laughs> with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had enough. Let's move away, yeah. move away. You're not coming in, all right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it. You know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this, is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically... On the f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the and the and the body proportions and everything, that it that it's a surprise that they can fly. Okay, it's not that no one's ever told them they can't. And as soon as someone tells them <laughs> you're not meant to fly, they all fall out the sky, going, "Oh, what are we doing?" Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence and that. At the moment, nobody's saying. There's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. <laughs> what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. <laughs> uh, why does he got to dismiss Carl like that? That That's wrong. Carl has so many great things in his mind. If you just let him get it out. Don't, don't shame Carl. Otherwise, he'll stop telling stories. We want these stories to continue. So we need to encourage Carl and make him feel like a million bucks. That's why I don't call him uh, head like an orange anymore. I don't. Uh, I got you. Got to respect the, the the Pilkington. He is going to be our leader one day, if enough people vote for him. But anyway, that's been this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Hopefully, this video will come out right. I hope there won't be any issues. Uh, if you want to check out Tianchu Lee's channel, like I said, you'll be able to see it somewhere over here. And um, if you want to go and check out the official release, just type in the Ricky Gervais show, and you'll see it on the right hand side. Uh, you can uh, click on it and rent the episode. Um, that way you get the full HD version of the videos. But anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm Devon Da Vinci. I look forward to seeing you guys on future videos. And hopefully you've just been a little bit more enlightened, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to give you the deuces. Peace.